Hello, welcome to episode 52 of DBE TV News. Thank you for watching us every Friday for the past year on the DBE TV channel 122 on Open View at 12 p.m. and on Bricks TV channel 509 at 4.30 in the afternoon if you are a Star Set subscriber. Remember, you can also watch this bulletin on the Department of Basic Education's YouTube channel. I am Tsekho Hacho Moachi. In the top stories this week, the Basic Education Department hosts the Early Grade Reading Research in Daba. With the Three Streams model gaining momentum, the department held a workshop to discuss technical education in the country. The department has conducted the Systematic Evaluation Study, which is expected to be released next year. Investigations are currently underway after learners from MC Wheeler Primary School in Alexandra found a human skeleton under one of the mobile classrooms. The Eastern Cape MEC Fundile Gade, together with the Public Works MEC Babalo Madikizela, visited Grant's Primary School in the Buffalo City District. The Gauteng and Free State Education Departments are dismayed following fires that have ravaged some schools. Let's start here. The Basic Education Department hosted the Early Grade Reading Research in Daba in Pretoria. It is the department's view that teaching children to read at a young age is imperative to improving educational outcomes. Children who do not learn to read in the early grades struggle to develop more advanced skills, while poor literacy levels also impact a country's socio-economic and well-being. The department took time to unpack the lessons from seven years of the Early Grade Reading Study, South Africa's largest primary school literacy study series. The plan for the department is to ensure learners can read with meaning and understanding in their home languages. Home language is crucial because children learn to read best in a language they already understand. If you are putting letters and symbols together into words, you need to know what that word means. And so learning to read has to happen in a language that you have vocabulary in and you understand well. That's why home language literacy in our grades 1 to 3 classrooms is the key place where reading is taught and learned. He further spoke about how home language reading from an early age assists learners to read and understand a second language. What we found through intervening to support the teaching of home language reading is that not only did it improve home language reading, but it also benefited their English reading. Even though we weren't targeting English, we weren't doing English training, the children ended up reading better in English as a result of their better home language reading skills because many of the principles of reading, of associating letters and symbols with meaning, those are the same principles you then use in reading a second language, but it really works to learn how do those principles work in the language you understand. The department has consistently urged parents to read with their children after school and even during the school holidays. Dr. Taylor explains why this is encouraged. I think parents can play two distinct roles. On the one hand, they can directly support their children's literacy development by uh, playing literacy games, uh, getting children to think about sounds and how those sounds are connected into words. They can value reading, they can show children of how to read, they can themselves display the enjoyment of reading. The second role they can play is in supporting the school and helping to, to make sure that the school is delivering the kind of teaching of reading that is required. So if parents are able to monitor where their children are at and have a sense of in grade one, in grade two, in grade three, how should my child be reading by this time, they can also then support and hold accountable the schools to be doing a better job. Dr. Taylor also spoke about the importance of teachers being supported, especially those in grades one to three, to teach home language reading well. That support will involve helping them to implement the curriculum through things like lesson plans. It will involve a minimum package of reading materials like, learn, like uh, reading books and posters and flashcards, things 
the tools to support the teaching of reading. And thirdly, it will involve professional support to teachers, people to help motivate and coach and train teachers to improve their own practice. I think if we put those things together in some way on a wide scale and we sustain that for a number of years, we will start to see the kinds of improvements in our children's reading that we really need. UNICEF was also part of the Indaba and it supports early grade reading as good and strong foundations are key. Our involvement as UNICEF is to ensure that um, um, the system is enabled or is supported to be able to um, look at or uh, explore interventions that will contribute to change in literacy and numeracy and the outcomes thereof. Uh, our contribution to quality education is our contribution to um, um, long-term attainment in the education sector. Um, as UNICEF, we're also quite um, committed to supporting foundation phase um, in early grade and early um, childhood development because we know with good foundations, transition from school to work become more positive for um, a majority of young people, particularly those from the um, uh, non fee paying school or um, poorer backgrounds. We also um, excited that this becomes a collaboration and it's not just going to be government who are who's intervening, intervening in, in, in the intervent, in programming, but we as agencies, UN agencies, um, are here to support government. We're also excited that there are academics who actually are providing knowledge or very um, a deep in, input on how to develop programs or interventions that works, particularly as we see that structured uh, pedagogy is a game changer, not in South Africa only, but globally. The Basic Education Department has hosted a two-day, three-stream model workshop in order to discuss technical education in the country. The department has officially started introducing the three streams model to learners. Historically, the South African education system focused mainly on the academic pathway, which led to dropouts and a high failure rate. Now, with this model, the department believes it would provide differentiated offerings to learners and respond to the skills needed for the changing world. The purpose of the workshop is to stimulate discussions uh, around technical education in the country, as well as to take stock of the progress that we have made since we strengthened the introduction of the technical stream uh, since 2016. Uh, there are a number of challenges uh, that are still persistent that need um, a gathering of this nature to uh, deliberate on and to put plans in place in response to these challenges so that we can steer the country in the right direction in line with the pronouncements of the NDP regarding the issue of production of skilled people who will enter the job market and the contribution of basic education through the vocational and the occupational streams in terms of getting learners to offer this subject uh, is at the center of the conversation. There were various commissions at the workshop looking into the broader aspect of the three streams model. One will be looking at the whole matter of subject combination uh, for learners in these uh, technical schools as well. The second one will also will be looking at the funding of technical schools as well as resourcing of these schools. And uh, the third commission will be looking at HR matters as we're grappling with the challenge of getting suitably qualified teachers to uh, offer these uh, specializations. What is it that we need to do? How can we work with other partners like higher education to ensure that we produce suitably qualified teachers? How can we put strategies in place to recruit artisans and technicians into the teaching profession so that we have a sufficient pool of teachers who are going to offer these subjects? After the break, we find out more about the systematic evaluation study conducted between February and April this year. Part of the compliance with the kitchen is good ventilation. And when we observe, we see that we have great window here, which brings in clean, fresh air and uh, air going outside. And also the use of these stainless steel tables uh, tables that are not rusted. This is a great um, a way of complying with, fo with food safety. And also the display of this poster which shows that in case of food 
poisoning case here at the school. The food handlers, actually, they know who to contact from your environmental health practitioners to the district coordinator and refer. We have a sample. She spoke about the in case of, 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 of poisoning where we track. Every day what we do is that we put the sample in case there is something that is reported. Maybe a child is not feeling well. If they want to trace it back to the school, we offer the sample so that it can be tested. So it is kept for a day. The next day we prepare the sample from the meal of the next day. We will have breakfast. That's what they ate. And this container is meant for lunch. And we have our um, stations, all these posters, when the food handlers go for training, when they come back, they come with posters, we display them so that as and when they work, they learn and they refer. Everyone has their own definition of what education is and means. What is yours? TED is a show that seeks to challenge the status quo by inviting guests that have a role and an inspiring story to tell about their journey in education. A lot of it is not learner-centered. This show seeks to dive in deeper conversations in quest of answering the big question, why education, when there's so much to do outside of it? Why invest energy and resources that are so impactful in our society? You're seeing a, a cartoon character that looks like you yes. counting to 10. Yes. This show airs on DBE TV channel 122. In case you miss it, binge watch it on YouTube, DBE TV. And also don't forget to follow us on all our social media platforms, simply DBE TV. The Department of Basic Education is looking forward to releasing the systematic evaluation study which was conducted in all nine provinces between February and April of 2022. According to the Director of National Assessments at the Department, Dr. Mark Chetty, almost 3,500 schools were targeted for the study. The sample size was considered to generate reliable national and provincial measures of learner performance. One of the key objectives of the study was to enable provincial education departments to have credible and reliable data to structure and support their intervention programs. The systematic evaluation study represents a comprehensive account of measuring learning outcomes linked to a structured understanding of the teaching and learning context in South Africa. We evaluate the learner's knowledge on reading outcomes and on mathematics. And we use that as a proxy for understanding what are the enabling factors influencing learner performance. We've incorporated into the design a whole school evaluation approach and a district evaluation uh, questionnaire to give us more conclusive data about why learners are having difficulties in certain areas, what are their strengths and what are the sort of learning gaps so that we can better intervene as a system. So we're looking forward to this new evaluation program being re released to the public, which we anticipate it to be in January 2023, which will give the system a comprehensive account below grade 12 of how learners are doing in the South African education system. The Gauteng Education Department has confirmed that learners from MC Wheeler Primary School in Alexandra discovered a human body underneath a mobile classroom on Thursday, the 2nd of June. This discovery was made during break when learners allegedly went to fetch a soccer ball that was underneath the Grade 5A mobile classroom. The school's management react reacted and contacted the police we inspected the scene and the learner's discovery was confirmed to be a human skeleton. The body was then removed from the scene and police indicated that an inquest case will be investigated accordingly. The Gauteng Department of Education has dispatched its psychosocial unit at the school to provide counselling and trauma support for all affected learners and staff. Stay tuned. When we return, we hear from the Eastern Cape Education MEC, Fundilet Gade, about the purpose of his visit to Hrens Primary School in Buffalo City.
The Presidential Youth Employment Initiative, or BYEI in basic education, aims to create opportunities of employment in our schools and to provide support to workers. The education assistants support teachers with administrative tasks, classroom management, sports coaching and cultural activities, while the general school assistants help with maintenance, cleaning, vegetable gardens and general administration. During the first phase in 2019-2020, the Western Cape employed over 19,000 teacher and general assistants to ensure continued teaching and learning in a safe environment. In 2021 and 2022, during the second phase, over 20,000 teacher and general assistants are employed. In addition to the valuable work experience gained at the school, the assistants receive training in various fields. The education sector welcomes this initiative. It allows our teachers to focus on their main duty of teaching, while assistants engage in supportive roles. The National School Nutrition Program, the NSNP, is a government intervention program aimed at enhancing learner well-being and learner participation in education. The NSNP aims to improve food security for learners by serving a nutritious meal. The NSNP focuses on the food safety from farm to plate. This food value chain ensures that safe and nutritious meals are served to learners. Compliance at all critical control points is non-negotiable so that the end users receive safe and quality meals. This video series promotes and emphasizes good food handling practices throughout the NSMP food value chain. Strict compliance to health regulations needs to be followed during storage and transportation of food. All warehouses and school kitchens must have a certificate of acceptability from the local municipality that shows compliance with health and safety regulations. Schools need to check the quality and quantity of food during delivery. Food must be transported in closed vehicles to adhere to safety regulations. This video series showcases the NSMP food value chain, how the program supports good food handling practices food safety compliance in critical control points such as the warehouses, delivery vehicles, storage, preparation, cooking, serving and disposal requirements. Storerooms in schools must be clean, well ventilated and secure. Food items should be checked for expiry dates before preparation. The volunteer food handlers prepare meals on all school days following a provincial menu. The program intends to address barriers of teaching and learning associated with hunger and malnutrition. On a daily basis, more than 9 million children receive a nutritious meal through the program. Meals provided to learners follow the food-based dietary guidelines as stipulated by the Department of Health, which offer a variety of food items including a daily protein dish, starch dish, as well as a fresh vegetable or fruit. Food waste should be discarded in bins with lids to keep rodents and flies away. The joy of learners taking part in school activities knowing there is a nourishing meal served daily through the National School Nutrition Programme. It shows every child is valued in the education system where their potential can be developed towards building a prosperous future. The Eastern Cape Education MEC, Fundile Gade, visited Friends Primary School in the Buffalo City District. He was joined by Public Works MEC, Babalo Matikizela. The Provincial Public Works Department has been instrumental as an implementing agent in refurbishing schools and dealing with other infrastructure projects. The department has successfully completed a number of projects in the province and handed them over to the community. The Friends Primary School is a full-service school which will have a full wing dedicated to learners with different special needs. Uh, our visit is more of a practical and uh, 
appreciation of that. How do we ensure that we build capacity of the of, of the of public works as a nerve center of infrastructure of the provincial government? That's one. Two, how do we ensure that we make an assessment of the projects that are being um, managed by public works as well, both as a department and also as an implementing agent, so that we can take a sober decision uh, of ensuring that the decision about insourcing of, 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 of infrastructure uh, uh, infrastructure build-ups uh, in the provincial government space is realized. But equally to respond to the questions that the MEC for Public Works have raised, the issue of the escalation prices, what are the causes, how do we respond to that, what are the lessons we have, uh, what are the projections moving forward. Uh, in terms of other projects that are being uh, held up and how do we then intervene as provincial government even in other implementing agencies. Now, police in Boxburg are investigating a fire which gutted Dromedaris Primary School in Recha Park on the 5th of June. According to information received, the school governing body was alerted of the fire at approximately 1 o'clock on that Sunday afternoon. One of the school's general assistants reported the incident and the local fire brigade managed to douse the fire. Eight foundation phase, which is grade R to three classrooms and the school storeroom were damaged as a result of this fire. Meanwhile, in the Free State, on the same day, the 5th of June, Dr. Block Secondary School in Haiderdal, Bloemfontein, was also damaged due to a fire. The girls' hostel block caught fire on Sunday afternoon, causing extensive damage. All learners were safely evacuated and overnight accommodation was arranged for 59 learners. Due to the fire, the learners have lost all their belongings and school books. The department is therefore appealing to individuals, religious organizations and NGOs to donate items such as blankets, mattresses, toiletries, bedding, food, clothes and school uniform. Staying in the province, Education MEC Tate Mahwe has called on the community of Makwane village in Kwakwa to help in exposing the culprits behind the torching of four classrooms at Mpataletzane Combined School. The fire took place on the Saturday the 4th of June. It's alleged that four grade 7 classrooms were burned down and the cause of the inferno is still unknown. Limpopo Education MEC Poli Bushielo has officially handed over renovated and newly constructed school buildings of Rita Primary School at Rita Village in the Greater Tanin Municipality. The school now has a new admin block, a nutrition centre, two blocks of newly constructed classrooms, 20 seats of EnviroLoo toilets, a guardhouse and a borehole for water supply. The MEC urged the community to look after the school and to guard it against vandalism. That's how we end this bulletin this week on channel 122 on Open View on YouTube and on Bricks TV channel 509 Starset. Before we go, we urge communities to protect their schools and report any illegal activities to the nearest police. During protest action, schools should not be vandalized or burned. Schools are a place for children to learn and build a bright future for themselves. Let's all work together to ensure these important structures are protected at all times. Thank you for watching.